Good morning. This is the notice of pre-AP pre-cal for Tuesday, September the 12th. All right, I hope you enjoyed the first video from Monday, September 11th, and we're just picking up from where we left off yesterday. I know that one of your assignments is to complete the entire math workshop for week six by Wednesday. You should have that. Sorry about the bell. Um, you should have that completed, but I'm just going over a few of them today. I have this completed by Wednesday. I'm going to go over numbers four through six, and 16 through 18 today. All right, so let's look at number four. I'm going to write on notebook paper so you can see it. All right, so number four, tangent of 60, that is in quadrant one. The reference angle is 60 since it is in quadrant 1. 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Since it's in quadrant 1, they are both positive. They are both positive. Now, the definition of tangent is y divided by x. So I got I got square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. A positive divided by positive will give me a positive. Change the division, the multiplication, and flip. These cancel out, and you're left with square root of 3. Secant of 0, that's a major point. That is at 1, 0. That's zeros here. You want the secant. That's the, M, that's the reciprocal of cosine. Well, if you flip 1, it is still 1, so your answer is 1. Now, here I have cotangent of negative pi over 2. Okay, see, it's negative. It's going opposite direction. Normally, pi over 2 is up here, but it would be down here at the 270. So that is 0, negative 1. Cotangent is defined as is the inverse of tangent, so it's x over y. So I got 0 over negative 1, which is 0. Okay, number 16. We're solving this quadratic equation. We have to get in standard form, so I'm moving both of these over here because you want your x squared to remain positive. It is in the form variable squared, variable, no variable. Okay, it's either easy or bust them up. You look here, coefficients 1, so it's easy. You just put two parentheses down. It's got a multiply to give you 10, add to give you 11. That is a positive 10 and a positive 1. Set both of them equal to 0. You should be able to move that over in your head. That gives me negative 10 and negative 1. Number 17, 5x squared equals 20x. Take a moment to determine what type of equation it is. All right, I'm going to move this over. It's a quadratic. Get it set equal to 0. I'm going to take a 5 and an x out. GCF, that's the only thing you can do here. Since this does have a variable with it, you've got to set equal to 0. x equals 0. Move that negative 4 over, it comes a positive 4. So your two answers are 0 and 4 for this quadratic equation. Remember, names for solutions for quadratic equations are also zeros, roots, and all that is is x-intercepts. One more, number 18, and we will go over the other ones on Wednesday after you had a chance to do them. This is a radical equation. You see the radical sign. The goal of a radical is to isolate the radical, which I have. The only thing i got to do now is square both sides to get the radical to disappear. 8 plus 5 squared, you got a foil. That foils out to a squared plus 10a plus 25. 
It's became a quadratic equation now. So I'm going to move these over here, get it set equal to zero. Combine like terms. 10 and negative 6 gives me positive 4. 25 and negative 30 gives me negative 5. Okay, that is bust them up because coefficient of 1, so not bust them up, I'm sorry, apologize, it's not busting, that's easy. Because you have a coefficient of 1, this is easy. Put two parentheses, and why it's called easy, you just put two parentheses down. It's got to multiply to give you 5, add to give you 4. That's positive 5 and negative 1. Set both of them equal to 0, you get negative 5 and positive 1. Now, because this function went from radical to quadratic, it transformed. You've got to make sure both of these still work for that radical. So if I plug negative 5 in, 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. Negative 30 plus 30 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So that one does work. 1. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 30 is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. 1 plus 5 is 6. Both of those work. So both of those are your answers for this particular equation. Okay, you can pause the video right now if you need to look at this for a little bit longer. Okay, the next thing I want to do is look at your um, first part of your homework, page 59, numbers 1, 4, and 8. Numbers 1, 4, and 8. Now, I'm not reviewing a rock or transformation of functions, but you need to be looking at that to make sure you know your rules. Um, I did post that transformation project. Please be reviewing that, making sure you understand what is expected in that project. Once again, that project is not due. It is not due this week. It is due, I believe I posted September 28th, so you've got a couple weeks on that. All right, so let's look at page 59. I'm not doing all three of these. Let me see which ones I am when I do that. I'm going to do numbers 4 and 8. You had to do 1, 4, and 8. I'm going to do numbers 4 and 8. So let's look at number 4. f of x equals... Okay. Let's look at our two functions we're graphing here. We have y equals x minus 1 and y equals negative 1. They're both linear, so we can use y-intercept and slope to graph it. Okay, so this first one, negative 1 is your y-intercept. I'm going to go up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. The other one is negative 1 as a horizontal line. Okay, we need to look at the point where something's going on. The discontinuity, the jumping's occurring at 3. So I go to x equals 3. I'm going to put a little mark right there to remind myself something's going on there. Okay, the first one's x minus 1. This is this line right here. I'm going to go to x equals 3 and go up to where I hit it, which is here. That is less than or equal to, for all x values, less than or equal to 3. That will be a closed dot. Now, it says, stay on this function for all x values less than or equal to 3. That is this way. What part of the function spans over that part? It's this right here. So I'm going to draw this and erase that part. Now I'm going to go to my other function, y equals negative 1. Go up. That's greater than. That's going to be an open dot. And it says for all x values greater than 3. That's over here. This is the part of the function that is over here. So I'm going to 
Draw that and erase the other. So my domain, if you're looking from left to right, is hitting the graph. That cancels that out, so your domain is all real numbers. Range, notice this keeps going, so from negative infinity all the way up to, even though it's open, we don't need a break because it's closed over here, but it does go up to 2 and stop in its bracket because it's going all the way up to the 2 on the y-axis. All right, take a moment to look at that. All right, let's look at number eight. I'm really liking this video, and I got a feeling you're going to be seeing some videos a lot. Just so that you can stop, pause, review what I'm saying. And if you get home uh, on homework and have trouble, you have a video to look at. But I'm really liking these videos. Okay, number eight. We have three pieces here. Okay, well, first function y equals negative 1, y equals x, and y equals negative x plus 1. Okay? All right, y equals negative 1. That is a horizontal line at negative 1. Y equals x. That's the identity function. You should know that by now. Um, y intercept is 0. Go up 1 over 1. Make sure you have enough points for a healthy line. Then y equals negative x plus 1. Y intercept is 1. Down 1 over 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 1. Go backwards. Alright, so the first piece, it says stay on y equals negative 1 for x values less than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to go negative 2 on the x, go down to where I hit that function, which is this. Less than or equal to, close dot. It says for all x values less than or equal to negative 2, well that is this way. The part of the function that's this way is this one. So I'm going to erase the other part of this function. Then you get on y equals x, which is here. At negative 2, I go down until I hit it. Open dot, because it's just less than. It means it's going to be between negative 2 and 2, the interval. Then I go over here to 2. Go up to it. 
That's open dot as well. I want the area of the function between negative 2 and 2, which is here. Erase this part of the graph. Erase this part. Now I'm going to go to the third function. Negative x plus 1. Go down. It's greater than or equal to, so it will be closed. X for the x values greater than or equal to, that's over here. This is part of the function that's over with these x values, so I would erase this part. Okay. Now let's do domain and range. Domain, remember this arrow keeps going this way, the arrow keeps going there. So it is eventually hitting, this cancels that out, this cancels that out, so your domain is all real numbers. Remember, quick review, what type of discontinuity it, this is? If it's piecewise, it is jump. You need to make sure you remember that, it's jump. You're jumping from one piece to another. Range. This arrow keeps going, so eventually it's going to hit it. Even though this is open here, it's closed over here, so don't need a break. Don't need till we get right here at 2. So it's negative infinity to 2, parentheses, because that's open. Okay, that's your homework, going over your homework. I have a checkpoint scheduled for Tuesday. What I want to do is I'm going to let you look at this. I want you to complete this checkpoint on graph paper. This is f of x equals 2x plus 3. If x is less than negative 1, 3 minus x if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. That's the first one. You have two problems on this checkpoint. Like I said, you don't have to print anything off. Just write these two problems on graph paper, draw a graph, and graph it for me. I will check this on Wednesday. Number two, f of x equals 3 if x is less than negative 2. x squared if negative 2 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. And then negative x plus 5 if x is greater than 2. So those are your two problems. This will go into the 30% category, so please take a moment to copy that now. You should have graph paper. It is on your supply list. If not, you can find an old graph throughout your notebook and use that. Okay. Pause if you need to copy it down for further. Okay, next thing I do want to go over our transformation project. I posted it yesterday, but we didn't go over it. So I'm going to read these directions to you. It says choose any of the parent functions we have learned in the unit. That is up to you. you just choose one. You can choose quadratic. You can choose cubic. Absolute value, square root. Just choose one of them. Make a half a poster that includes the graph of the parent function and eight transformations of that particular parent function that you have chosen. This, that means there will be a total of nine graphs on your poster. Don't get a whole sheet of poster. Do a half sheet. Include two vertical translations. That means up and down. That means if you chose x squared, you would have f of x equals x squared plus 3, or whatever number you want, or f and f of x equals x squared minus 1. There's an up and there's a down. You can choose whatever numbers you want to. Then two horizontal Translation to the right or left inside the parentheses. Two reflections. Negative x squared or that would be negative x squared. That would reflect about the x-axis. Or inside reflect about the y-axis. That's what that's talking about. One vertical stretch and one vertical shrink. Very important. Be sure to label each graph with a title. Parent function, that should be the front first graph. Then vertical, translation up, vertical translation down, horizontal translation right, horizontal translation left, reflection over x-axis, reflection over y-axis, vertical stretch, 
and vertical shrink. Be sure to label each graph with an equation. Be sure to also include a description of how to perform the transformation. Example, here's a great example. Title, horizontal translation right. Here's the an example equation. Description of trans... Move function four units to the right. That's what I'm asking for under the picture. The only information that's needed under the graph of the parent function is the name of the parent function. Please be neat and colorful. Make it pretty. I, st I got two rubrics on the back of this. Staple one of them to the poster so I can use it to grade it. The other one is for your notes so you can jot any notes down. Or make sure that you've included everything. Do not forget your name. This project is worth a 100 major test grade. This is a 60% category grade. This will be one of your six major assessments for this nine weeks. So please make sure you read this. Like I said, this is not due to September the 28th. Thursday, September the 28th. Okay, what we're going to do next is go over our homework examples, homework from Monday. Our learning target is still the same, so copy this in your notebook. LT learning target. I can determine the composition of functions. And what I'm going to do today, guys, is I went over the examples in the last video. I'm just strictly going over your homework. So I am looking at page 69, page 69. You have 1 through 15 odd, and that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to look at 1 through 9 odd. I'm going to go ahead and write the directions. It says if f of x equals x squared plus 1, g of x equals 2x, and h of x equals x minus 1. Those are the functions I'm using for, to evaluate these compositions. So i got the L function, the G function, and the H function. So number 1, G of L of 1. Okay, I'm going to start from inside work out. So F of 1, find the L function, equals x squared plus 1. Whatever is sitting in this parentheses is what I plug in for that variable. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. This is not my answer. This is what I'm using to find my overall answer. Now, I take my g, g of 2. Remember, composition function means you're using the structure of one function to help evaluate the structure of another one. g of 2. My g function is 2x. Whatever's in this parentheses is what I plug in for x. 2 times 2 equals 4. This is my overall answer. This is what this is equal to, is 4. Number 3. H of F of negative 5. Work from inside L. F of negative 5. L function is X squared plus 1. Negative 5 squared plus 1. Negative 5 squared is 25. 25 plus 1 is 26. Now, find h of this. h of 26. My h function is x minus 1. 
Whatever's in this parenthesis is what I substituted for x. 26 minus 1 is 25. That is my overall answer. It's 25. H of f of negative 5 is 25. These are fun. I like these. We did these last year. Should be coming back to you. Number 5. L of H of negative 3. L of H of negative 3. I'm going to start inside out. Now remember, before I do this, I want you to know if you ever see this, that means the same thing. You just start with what's next to it and work your way toward the outward. Okay, so H of negative 3. H of negative 3 equals my H function is X minus 1. Take this, plug it in. That gives me negative 4. I'm going to take this value and plug into my L function. L of negative 4. Gives me 16 plus 1, which is 17. My overall answer is 17. I'm going to go ahead and write these functions back on the top of this paper so you can see them while I'm working them. f of x is x squared plus 1. g of x equals 2x. And h of x equals x minus 1. Those are my functions. For number 7, g of f of 7, start from inside out, 7, I'm going to plug 7 in my l function. L of 7 equals x squared plus 1. That's 49 plus 1, which is 50. Now, I'm going to find g of 50. My g function is 2x. Plug 50 in for x, and you get 100. So the entire thing is equal to 100. Use this function to help find the value of that function. Number 9, L of G of negative 6. See, it's written different, but it means the same thing. Negative 6 plugged into the G function, get that answer, plug into L function. So G of negative 6 equals the G function is 2X. Gives me negative 12. I'm going to take this value and plug into my L. So L of negative 12. me 144 plus 1 which is 145 so 145 okay that was the first part of your homework and like tonight you're going to do the even ones the ones that we did not do you're going to go back and do those all right now we're going to look at the next part it says, for each pair of functions, find f of g of x and g of f of x. So let's look at 11 and 13. So on number 11, we're finding f of g of x and g of f of x. Okay, now my functions, f of x equals 1 half x minus 7, and g of x equals x plus 6. I'm going to do this first one first. f of g of x. Okay, x is closest to g. So I'm going to do g of x equals my g function, x plus 6. Remember, these were kind of the weird ones yesterday we did. X is next to G, so I'm going to do G of X. I take X, I plug it in for X, it does not change it. So now I'm going to take this 
and plug it into my L function, which is 1 half X minus 7. Whatever is inside this parentheses is what I plug in for the X. 1 half times X plus 6 minus 7. Distribute. 1 half X. 1 half times 6 is 3 minus 7. Combine like terms. 1 half X minus 4 is what F of G is equal to. That is my answer for F of G of X. G of F of X, I'm going to go back and do this one now. X is closest to L, so I'm going to do F of X equals the L function, which is 1 half X minus 7. I take X, I plug it in for X, does not change it. Stays there. So now I'm going to take this, plug in the G function. G of 1 half X minus 7 equals X plus 6. That's my G function. I'm going to take this and plug it in for X. I put in parentheses because I'm showing that I'm substituting, in for, I'm substituting it in for X. Now I'm just going to rewrite it without the parentheses. Combine like terms. And I get 1 half X minus 1. Negative 7 plus 6 equals negative 1. So my final answer for this is G of F of X is this. So in this problem, they were asking you for two things. They were asking you for F of G of X and G of F of X. So the final problem, the solution to this is this one. The solution for this is this one. So you have two answers on this one. Okay, let's look at number 13. We have f of x equals 2x, g of x equals x cubed plus x squared plus 1. And I want to find f of g of x. x is close to g, so I'm going to find g of x equals the g function. I take X, I plug in X, does not change it. Stays the same. Now take this, plug in the F. L functions 2X. So I'm going to substitute this in for X. Whatever's in that parentheses goes in for that variable. So X cubed plus X squared plus 1. Distribute, that gives me 2X cubed plus 2X squared plus 2. That is what f of g of x is equal to. Now let's do g of f of x. f of x is closest, x is close to f, so 2x is the f function. I take x, I plug in it, does not change it. Now, g of 2x, my g function, is x cubed plus x squared plus 1. Whatever is in this parentheses is what I substitute in for my variable. So 2x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1. Okay? you got to cube everything in there. So 2 cubed is 8. 8x cubed, square everything in this, this is 4x squared plus 1. That would be my answer for g of f of x.
Let's look at number 15. Number 15 just says find f of g. When it says that, just go ahead and put your x over here because it means that it just left it out. That means you're going to do just like we did up here. x is closest to g. Plug that into l. So if it just says f of g, just go ahead and put your variable over there. means that. So on number 15, we got f of x equals square root of x plus 4. G of x equals x squared minus 4. And we want to find f of g of x. So g of x equals the g function, x squared minus 4. I take x, I plug it into x. It does not change it. So now, I'm going to do f of my answer I got right here. My f function is square root of x plus 4. Whatever is in this parentheses is what I plug in that variable. So I got x squared minus 4 plus 4. I wrote in parentheses to let you know I'm replacing the x with that. Now I'm going to rewrite it without parentheses. Combine like terms. Negative 4 and 4 gives me 0, so I just got the square root of x squared. Can you take the square root of x squared? Yes, that is just x. And that would be my answer. That is our homework problems for that. We only got two more examples, and that's going to be the end of this video. Okay, I want you to turn back to page 65. Page 65 in your notes from yesterday. We're going to finish number 7 and number 8. Alright, I'm going to write on a piece of notebook paper, but I'm at number 7 on page 65. Number 7 says find g of g of x if f of x equals 2x squared and g of x equals x minus 3. So I'm going to write that information on here. Number 7, this is page 65 in your notes. It says find g of g of x, f of x equals 2x squared, and g of x equals x minus 3. Work from inside out. G of x equals the g function, x minus 3. I take x, I plug it in, it does not change it. Now, I'm going to move once again to g again. Because you can do that. Your g function is x minus 3. This is a weird one because you're going to plug it within itself. So first thing I did, g of x, x minus 3, did not change it. Took this answer, moved to the outside g. Found my g function again. Now I'm going to take that and plug it in for x. I put it in parentheses to let you know I set you that in for x. Write it without parentheses. That gives me x minus 6. So g of g of x equals x minus 6. That's my final answer. Okay, I'm going to do number 8 on the same page. It says find f of f of x. Oh, for the same ones. It's the same functions. f of x is first. I take x, I plug in it, it does not change it. Now I'm going to do f of 2x squared. Find my f function. Okay, watch this. Pretty neat. I'm going to take this and plug it in for that. Took this, plugged it in. Now I'm going to square 2. Now when you've got a power raised to power, you must multiply your exponents. Now, just multiply. It's going to give me 8x to the 4th. So that's equal to 8x to the 4th. So I work from inside out. F of x. My f function, took x, plugged in, did not change it. 
Got this, move to the next one. f of 2x squared. Found my f function again. Took this, replaced the x. This was raised to the second power, so I squared the 2. Power to power. 2 times 2 is 4. Then multiply the coefficient 2 and 4 to arrive at 8x to the 4th. Well, that ends our lesson for the day. I just want to write down your assignment from this lesson. Your assignment for Tuesday. September the 12th is to complete numbers 2 through 16 even on the same page you did homework last night, page 69. Complete numbers 2 through 16 even on page 69. I will, when I post this video, recap of all your assignments that are due on Wednesday. Oh, and also complete your checkpoint. Complete piecewise checkpoint. Like I said, when I post this video in a second, I will... Recap all the assignments that I'm going to be checking for on Wednesday. If you have any questions, please email me or text me through Remind 101, and I'll do my best to help you. Y'all have a great day. Please be safe, and I will see you Wednesday. Thanks for being awesome kids.